Marco Royce. Daniel Marlon! Wonderful! Fantastic from Royce. Jude Bellingham, that's excellent. Jude Bellingham, this is absolutely brilliant. Jude Bellingham! Absolutely magnificent! Rina, brilliant from the American. Just like that. Well, the best of clearances! Oh, what a volley! Matt Hummels! Went in for Holland! Like he's never been away! The man in front of goal who is simply deadly! Hey, welcome to the BVB Podcast. Uh, if this is your first time listening, thank you so much for checking us out. You can find us on all your favorite podcast platforms like Apple, Podcast, Spotify, uh, pretty much anywhere. And then you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the BVB Pod. We also have episodes posted on YouTube if you search the BVB Podcast. So uh, yeah, thanks so much for hanging out. My name's Jake. Carver is with me, man. How are you doing? Could be better. I know I mentioned before the recording that it's just been a really busy week for me personally and also, of course, being a Dortmund supporter. So, I mean, it just looks like the season's essentially over and all four competitions and our injury list doesn't seem to shrink whatsoever. So, woohoo! I don't remember if, if it was a text or if I said it on here last week or if it was something I tweeted, but I mentioned, <laughs> I know I mentioned it and now I'm like, I'm an idiot. I was like, I think I said I would almost prefer to tie some games rather than the up and down of playing great and then just playing terribly. And what do we get? We get the two worst ties ever. Given give the, the circumstances, they both felt like terrible losses, um, which we're going to get into. So mm-hmm. coming up, obviously, we're going to recap uh, us bowing out, not even gracefully, of Europa League with our lot... Or, our tie draw mm-hmm. tie, but tie loss to, on aggregate. But loss. Yeah. Uh, to Rangers. We're going to recap Augsburg from on Sunday. Uh, we'll get into some Twitter and listener questions that we have. And then later on, we're also going to be joined by Adam at foosball tweet on uh, Twitter, who you're probably well aware of, who has an amazing site following the, the women and the men. And if you're like getting into stats and the, the nitty gritty of that, or if you're interested uh, in the women's game, specifically the, the Dortmund women's team, uh, he's got a great website for that. So we're going to talk to him a lot about the women's team who are doing fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe that's what we, we just turn into, like, maybe the rest of the season we just, <laughs> just start focusing on the women's the team. To the women's. And it'll be a lot happier because they are yeah. playing great. So we're, we're going to get into all that. But, uh, Carver, I guess we got to start out with Rangers. How are you feeling going into the game? What are your overall thoughts on the game? And Well, I, I mentioned <laughs> last week that I I didn't feel confident. I thought we were going to... Uh, tie 2-2 two, two, and get knocked out. And that's, that's exactly what happened. We called the result. I forgot um, we, we called it until mm-hmm, you texted me. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I still feel very sad. But. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, man, seeing the lineup on whatever I was streaming on again to see the game, I can't remember now, but they had the lineup in such like a confusing way. They had Schultz at center back. They had Mounier on the left wing back. And I was just looking at this like, well, that's obviously, and I know, you know, when you see just the list, you can think like, oh, we don't know what shape we're going with. But when it shows you the shape in those players, I was like, that's obviously not what it's going to look like. And they've, tur- they've had some, well, I, I said that last week where mm-hmm. I was really confused by the lineup because whatever they've been putting on TV has been wrong. And then even if you get on Fop Mob or like any other stats thing, like the lineups have been all over the place. Um and so that was, I think before the game, I even texted you. I was like, oh, man, we are going with the back three, according yeah. to the TV lineup. And then once they were playing, I was like, no, wait, no, yeah. that's not what's happening. But and, and not just the shape, but, you know, our bench alone should tell you all you need to know about the state of this squad right now and the health of this squad. Because, I mean, again, you have Schultz starting. Um, and if you look on our bench, we don't really have much of anyone that's exciting. I know we have, you know, players like Wolf that's been performing well in recent weeks, but other than that, you have a bunch of youth players and, uh, you know, Borussia Dortmund, two players. So that's not going to give you much confidence. And, of course, we went on to uh, tie the game and get knocked out, which, you know, fair play to Rangers. They deserve to go through. Their, their players stepped up and they executed their game plan very well. They knew our weaknesses and exploited them countless times in both legs. And they played their hearts out. So, you know, all the best of luck to them. And I, and I hope they perform well for the rest of this tournament. Yeah, um, yeah, good on them. And we, I mean, the energy was cra- crazy. We knew yeah, it was going to be crazy was- there too. And mm-hmm. they had just, uh, just recently, like within the last few weeks, they like opened restrictions too, where they were fans back in. So you know, 
they're just going to be up for it and going crazy. And, and the choreo even, you know? Yeah. Shouts to, there was a lot of Dortmund uh, supporters there and our, uh, our new friend Anton was out there too. Uh, yeah. Supporting, uh, who, who lives in, uh, if you don't know him, he runs the Glasgow Bruce and official fan club. So he was there. Our fans were great. There was some, Really cool photos and everything, but I, yeah, mean, I saw not, clips. not quite enough. <laughs> <laughs> I saw clips of them uh, when the squad was warming up even, and our away section was just absolutely bouncing. I mean, with the flags and um, I think like fireworks even. Um, or some flares or something. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that was really cool to see, and, and it, it sucks. Or that's, that's great that they keep the spirit up all night. It was just it sucks that the team couldn't really um, show up and give the fans something in return. Yeah, and so, I mean, the game started strong. Before we get in, like, real, we'll, we'll get into, like, the specific story of the game and, like, all the details and everything. Um, how are you feeling throughout the game, especially when we, like, tied and then went up? Like, because at that moment, I was like, we, we, we could do this. Like, we, <laughs> did you have any hope at all, or were you just... I, I didn't really think we were going to get quite get there. You still have to score a few more, and um, it just it didn't look like we really had the personnel to go and pull that off, but... Yeah, I want, to, I want to take it back. So we, we did start really strong. I know we set the tempo well and looked to do damage early. You know, we created a handful of chances within, you know, just the first few minutes. So I wasn't saying I was feeling it then, but at least it, the lads actually looked up to it. Yeah, started strong. I was kind of hopeful in the beginning, especially later when we went two up. But uh, yeah, 18th minute. Was that what it was? 18th minute penalty, stupid penalty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just us being our own worst enemy, you know? I mean, that how many... Mistakes are we going to have at the back every single game before the players in the squad take a real look at themselves in the mirror and be like, why don't we just not fuck up for once? <laughs> just once. And it, I know so, it was a lazy tackle from Brent. Yeah. So he's been getting, we, we, I mean, we were pretty hard on, on Brent and we like dubbed ourselves the Brent. I dubbed us the Brent boys. I don't know how, but uh, we, we're big fans of Brent and we, yeah. he had been playing well. I know he's been getting a lot of like heat on Twitter lately. How, how do you, and obviously that given away that penalty was just stupid and mm-hmm. sloppy. And I mean, someone's got to make the, the mistake cause that's what we do. How have you been feeling about Brent lately? Cause yeah, it was a lazy tackle and um, you know, he keeps giving or he keeps being given more and more chances and, and I think rightly so. I know a lot of people don't think he deserves that many chances, but I do think he is a, a quality player. But just, he just, I think he's really mentally lazy at times, if that's even a phrase. Um, at that tackle, it just looked like he didn't really care much. He was just kind of half-assed defending. And of course, you're going to get punished for that. And at a, a state of a game like this, you need to be fully focused, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So with him, I know people with the the last two games specifically, because he hasn't been playing great and people are like, oh, I drop him. People online have been like furious seeing him on the lineup. Um, but also at this point, I'm like, who, who else, who else is going to come in instead of him though? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it given our injury list as well, you know, it, it's going to be com- constant rotating players. And if you're throwing youth squads or youth players into that mix, I think that's just kind of setting them up for failure since they're not really used to that kind of level. Yeah. Um, but what's one thing that I was really surprised about after that penalty is it didn't look like we dropped our heads. Mm-hmm. You know, I've said that time and time again in this season that, you know, we just because a team even just ties it up, we just immediately start looking like we're down three and four nil and we just can't dig ourselves out of those holes mentally. Um, but it looked like we just still stayed on them right whenever they uh, first scored that penalty. I mean, we were picking up this uh, pace even more and um, attacking well. I know like Jude hit the post in the 30th mm-hmm. minute. I know Malin had a handful of decent shots with, I know you and I have mentioned in recent weeks that he's got that quick snapshot. Yeah. And he's able to yeah. pull those off. at looks like almost any angle. So we kept on him until we finally netted one, you know? Yeah. It, I was, we, we looked up for it. It almost was just like, we're up for it, but we didn't have the quality and like the personnel that we needed to really kick on and go through like we probably and a lot of people are hating on Holland too because he's just been been so like out and people are like so disconnected from him but it's like honestly we needed him um I don't I think anyone would be stupid to say we don't need him um to perform like at the level we needed to to get that game on move on we did we did look better I almost think going into into that game the I feel like the game was over as soon as we gave up a goal granted we came back and we did yeah. go up but it's like if that's just the dynamic of that game. It's like if we give them a goal or any hope or anything, like it, it's done. We're not going to be able to crawl out of that. 
Um, yeah, it's it's a mountain to climb for sure. Yeah. And also, I forgot to mention, I don't know why it just hit me just now, but what a player Ryan Kent is, by the way, for Rangers. I mean, he ripped us apart in both legs. Brilliant runs, great turns, great dribbles. I mean, he looked like he had a whole uh, whole mess of pace and he had a low center of gravity. And so he's obviously really hard to uh, to knock over at times. But, you know, that's the kind of winger that Dortmund need. And that's the kind of winger that Dortmund have yet to replace uh, Sancho with. Yeah. They, they looked good all around. And, I mean, the thing uh, we talked about last week, how um, even, like, their fans didn't have a lot of confidence and former players didn't have a lot of confidence. They wrote them off. But the fact that they got that big win was going to make this game even harder, not even on the aggregate scoreline, but their confidence moving forward, the fact that they came yeah. uh, to our home and d- turned us over, of course they're going to be like, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to... They just played that game with so much confidence. They knew what to do. They, they knew they could take us. They knew could take us on and blow passes and mm-hmm. that's exactly what it did and it was it was just rough but yeah. w- <laughs> I was just saying no yeah I read a few articles that uh, Giovanni von Bronckhorst uh, had three different game plans in mind for Rangers and he said uh, last Thursday it was plan C which is really interesting how much thought that he put into this game you know really trying to give uh, Dortmund a run for their money because I, I mean it, it's crazy that the belief that those players not only had in themselves but also these systems that he had in place for them. I mean, that's three different game plans. That's, that's pretty wild. But I mean, they were able to rip us up and almost all of them, you know, whether it be out wide, they were killing us on the wings for both, um, both legs. Akenji got gassed handful of times in the, uh, the first leg and, and this leg as well with the, uh, over the top through balls. I know Hummels was gassed a handful of times and shocking game he had, uh, with the through balls to Morelos, I mean, I know he provides also that physicality that some of our players tend to shy away from as well. Yeah, it's it's sad to hear that he had so many game plans and they went with C and then it, we're over here like, do we have any <laughs> yeah. game plan? The game plan is to not be injured, but that's failing too. And it's like, we don't have a game plan after that. And we've talked about it multiple times. And I know that's something like a lot of fans like think about our concern. It's like, what is our game plan? Yeah. Um, and maybe we'll get into more of that later because I do want to get into specifics about like how injuries have rocked this season. I think everyone knows that, but I don't know. We'll, we'll get into it a little bit later. We don't have, and we don't have to linger on, on this game too much because it's like, well, I, I wanted to talk a little bit oh, more yeah. just so I, I know going into the second half, our confidence drops even more because Munier gets injured. Yeah. And I thought he also, he had a pretty solid game and was providing what very little width we had going into that or for that first full half. So when he came off, I mean, we just came out of the the gates after those first few minutes of, I guess, decent play. We just looked really one-dimensional. I mean, it was very similar looking to the uh, St. Pauli game Mm -hmm. where we just had, like, no ideas going forward and just kind of uh, muscle up anything we could throw together and throw the kitchen sink at them, I guess. But And we were still pretty shocking at the back, too. Um, Even with the subs, I know Favre... Had a handful of ones that are questionable to me. I, I personally, what I would have done after Monier Favre got, or Rose, Rose? What did I just say? Did I, I say said Favre. Favre? <laughs> you dreaming? What the hell? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea why I said Favre. <laughs> Rosa. Um, what I would have done if I were, if I were Rosa is sub uh, Pongracic on for Munier at half and then put Chan at right back instead of Wolf at right back. Yeah. Because I, I, it's not like I don't fancy Wolf on the pitch, but him as a right back, I think is just setting him up to failure. It's, he obviously doesn't have the defensive qualities. And that's where they targeted whenever Munier came off is that right side. Um, the goal that went over, uh, not just kind of through Hummels, and he made like a half-assed tackle as well, came from that side. And I feel like if you have uh, Pongratchid's on the right and uh, Chan as well, I think that you know locks down or is able to control that side of the pitch a little bit more because they have yeah. the pace and power and uh, composure on the ball to stop those attacks. Yeah, was so. Pongratches, he didn't start, did he? No, he didn't. No, no, no. I, don't think, so. I think that was one, like, Rangers. I called, like, or we, I think in our prediction, we might have, because we did the, call that for uh, Augsburg, and, and he oh, did. Okay, yeah, yeah, he did start that one, because I, I don't know, people have beef with him, too. People have beef with most of our players, <laughs> um, but I don't know. I, I feel like he's, like, solid, Um so yeah, I don't know. I I would I don't know if I'd say at least not like consistently solid because yeah. I I get the Looked criticism okay. for him. I don't know if he's really at, you know at Dortmund level to become a permanent player here after his uh, loan, but he does he has looked decent in the games that he's played recently, and I think that's a game that we could have really benefited with him being on the field. Yeah, 
Um, oh, and then another thing was uh, I would have subbed on Tigas instead of Renier. Just, I mean, mountains of questions there. I, I still have no idea after two years what Renier does. I literally have no I- idea. Every time he comes on, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to pay attention to him and see that, like what are his qualities. And I'm well, like, that's how I'm watching felt, my eyes open. Like, I don't. <laughs> that's how I felt too. Like in this game and in the Augsburg game, which we'll talk about, but it's like he just disappears. It's like there's not even a player on the yeah. field. Like what? And, Did and, he t- I'm be curious if he actually touched the ball because I don't remember it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and obviously with Tigas, you have that much more of a physical presence, which that's going to off put. Rangers defense. I think yeah. he could have really uh, produced some chaos in their box given his size and strength and, and heading ability as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, do you have anything more on this game or do you want to move um, on? <laughs> or besides, I, I mean, we have our, the injuries. We More more injuries, just yeah, injuries. Yeah, more injuries. injuries. So I have a little fun fact for you. Did you know five out of our last seven games we've had to take people off of in, for injury? Not like after the game, they kind of felt sore and they're out for a few days. I'm talking like they could not continue. Five out of our last seven games. What what was our, uh, I mean, when Reyna went out and then. Reyna, Holland, Meunier. Yeah. um, Now I'm blanking at the other ones. Uh, uh, Kanji Zagadu, I think they also went out. Yeah, 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 Kanji and Zagadu, yeah. Just fun. Um, and I guess the only positive from that game is we finally got to see Schultz actually utilize his pace after being here for like two or three years now. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but it was towards the end of the game, they could have made it uh, 3-2 easily. Yeah. And Schultz was the only one that hustled back. But man, I watched him run and I was like, there it is. He can run. <laughs> okay. Did you see before, I guess before we get off Europe in this game, did you see the uh, the Bellingham clip? Oh, with him yelling at Schultz? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I wasn't a huge fan of that, personally. I know I was uh, talking, uh, billing him up a whole bunch last week, but that's not something I really wanted to see from him. You know, you have to respect your player or your teammates, obviously, as much, if not more, than your opponents. And I didn't really also think Schultz had that out of a game. I mean, that that place, that pass that he made, like, I guess could have been a little bit better, but it really wasn't the worst pass in the world. It and got to his feet. It was yeah, just it slightly get, behind him. It was slightly behind him. And it's not like you can't really control that. Um, th- I mean, that those kind of passes need a lot of pace to get through their uh, first lines of defense. So, uh, yeah. Really, and also, it's not like, you know, how is that going to help Schultz's confidence given how he's performed these last few years? Yeah. I'm, I'm curious what, like, if there was anything that happened behind the scenes or with Rose or anything. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, par- part of me, I mean, seeing it at first – and just being so upset, I think a lot of fans were like, yeah, yell at him, do it, blah, blah, blah. But also, then thinking about it, it's like, dude, yeah, just not, not, it, it's so counterproductive. It is Because if you're going to start bickering, and that's what we see in this team a lot, is like, just the frustration because people are trying to do it on their own, and like, they, yeah. this just the, Some there's no pointing. like team cohesiveness, especially when you start doing that. And that just, that proves it too. Um, I think we're all can be mad and frustrated at Schultz sometimes, but that is so counterproductive and it just it just shows how like disjointed this team is mm-hmm. um and then you even saw it in the the Augsburg game like there was a lot of times Bellingham was getting frustrated I was like yeah because yeah. you're still frustrated from the last thing and if you don't trust or believe in your teammates yeah I was I was gonna get into that more uh for the Augsburg game but he does look a little like um burnt out at the moment yeah. I think he's gonna benefit from having this week now obviously not week off but having no games for the next five or six days because yeah, he's. I mean, he's played. I don't know how many games straight lately. And when you're y- that young, it's going to take a toll on your body. Yeah. So just take the week and obviously train hard, but at the same time, get some rest. Yeah. If there's any benefit, it's like it, it's going to be interesting to see. If maybe now that we have, we don't have any other thing to focus on except Bundesliga, which maybe we're not going to get the title because we'll talk about that. That's pretty far off now. Yeah. But I'd love to see and God, so many injuries. It's r- ridiculous. But the fact that they'll have full weeks in between games, hopefully we can see a bit of consistency or them work together more. I don't know. That's just more time on the training ground to Yeah, I agree that that this would be the perfect opportunity to build some consistency. Absolutely. So do you want to move on to Augsburg? Absolutely. All right. So uh we did see some changes in the lineup, uh mainly because injuries and seeing the injury list before this before this game. Again, we're going to jump into injuries later, but just, I, so seeing the lineup, I don't know how you felt seeing the actual, the team sheet and who was on it, but I was almost surprised. I was like, oh, wait, 
there are some people who aren't injured. So mm-hmm. I kind of forgot. I was like, I because I genuinely was like, are we going to just play the under 23s? Because I didn't know who we had. Um, but we saw uh, Pongracic, Hummels, and Chan. We called that as well. That that was the game that I said we were going to yeah, yeah, yeah. go out with this, not only a back three, but this back three. Yeah. Um, then we saw Guerrero, uh, Bellingham, Witzel, Dahoud. I think I kind of forgot about Witzel because he hadn't been playing so much. I was like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. we do have Witzel. Mm-hmm. Um, Dahoud, Hazard, um, and then Mollen and Brant. Yeah, also, side note, before I move up the field, uh, Chan also looks 15 times more comfortable in a back three than a back four. I know he yeah. made so many different mistakes when he was uh, in that back four, but he looks a lot more comfortable in this uh, system. But yeah, I think... With the back three, back four, like I, I did put out a Twitter poll because I know you and I have been like really wanting a back three. Mm-hmm. And uh, with the Twitter poll, it was actually like 50 50. It was like, so it's interesting to see that people are, I don't know how split people are. And maybe, yeah, Rosa keeps going with that primarily despite injuries. Now we're going with this back three. But I think it's that's just the solidity. Like it gives you so much more at the back because like we see. Our two when we're playing a back four, we see our two center backs get split so often on the counterattack. Um, so the back three gives you a little more stability, especially if you have your wing backs actually getting back to to uh, oh, yeah. pl- like defend. Which is I don't know why I'm calling for it now. I agree, like Chan, I like Chan in that. He actually looks like a decent right center back, mm-hmm. um, which I don't hate. So yeah, it, it was a handful of different players that were trying out different roles uh, today. So you had. Uh, Brant back to kind of that right wing position. I think he that's one of his like worst positions personally. I know he didn't do much at all under Favre when he played in that role. Uh, Bellingham at, like as an attacker, obviously he's like at times an attacking mid, but like this game he was like an attacker. So it was interesting to see him up there. Um, I thought there was one other one, but I guess I'm just um, forgetting off the top of my head. Playing up, up top. Well, when we saw the subs, like Hazard went up top when Wolf came in later, um, and then Vitzel and Dehu were kind of playing cent- central. Um. Yeah, and and Vitzel again didn't play that bad. He, uh, you know, he had a clear role in mind. Uh, Rosa, whenever he was selecting Vitzel for this game, of you know, just bring on stability, don't take any risks, hold the ball up well. And there was a handful of instances where he really, you know, he was holding off. It looked like two, even three Augsburg players at a time, and just bringing in some uh, calmness in the back three. Um, what are your thoughts? I did want to ask, because I know there's a lot of this on on the interwebs too, but uh, Makoko, because a lot of people are calling for like, hey, give him a chance, give him a chance, especially with our injuries, like give him a chance. What are your thoughts on him starting a game, like at this point? Uh, it, you know, I was actually thinking about that very same question earlier. You know, I don't know if he would, you know, these next few months to a year benefit more from starting every game or keep easing them in with more and more minutes. I'm definitely not saying, you know, play him at, you know, 80, 85th minute every single game. I'm talking at least 15, 25 minutes a game. And I think that would be probably the best course of action for him, which it looks like it's had, has been happening in the last week or two. He's coming mm-hmm. on 70th or so minute. Came on um, 68th in this 68th. game. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't, I'm fine with him not starting. Like people are, that's what people are calling for him to start. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know he scored in the last game, our last Bundesliga game, but a lot of people scored in the last, last Bundesliga game, and it was a great setup by Royce. Um, and I'm just, I, I don't know. I, I'm not ready for him to start yet. Mm-hmm. If he wants to start, I'm cool, but I, I don't see, like, yeah, I, I'm there too. I'm not with everyone who's like, oh, like so mad that he's not starting yet. It's like you got to ease him into it. It's a big gap, a big difference between playing U23s mm-hmm. and first team like there's a big gap and I know he's he's done some stuff here and there Mm -hmm. um and yet no he hasn't had a lot of like opportunities to do more but also I think there's been some games where he we're talking about uh Rainier Mm -hmm. just disappearing a little bit like he kind of goes in spurts where like he doesn't get the ball or he's not active or not around um so yeah uh, I'm fine with him not starting sorry to anyone who's like all on board with him yeah, and, and he showed his inexperience also in these last few weeks. I mean, like, he didn't do much of anything uh, whenever he played at Rangers, and he didn't do too much today, or not today, but against Augsburg either. And uh, I'm not having a go with the lad. I'm just saying, again, this is why you need to kind of ease him into this kind of level yep. because he, he shows his inexperience at times. Yeah, um, good for him to come on and score, but that doesn't mean he's ready to start the next game. 
Uh, yeah, un- unless he unless he really shows an improvement in a number of areas besides getting it in the net. Yeah, um, he, like his decision making. You know, he's not that physically strong. I think he can really work on that and using his body a little bit more, uh, since he has such a low center of gravity as well. Um, but yeah, so this first half it was it was pretty frustrating. This is one of those halves, one of the very few halves this season where. You know, we didn't look like we can combine much at all on, you know, either end of the pitch. Um, it's weird. It almost looks, it looked like at times, um, I know like a bunch of our attacks came from the left, but I thought we looked way more dangerous when we were attacking from the right, which is whenever Hazard got that goal. You know, I, I don't understand how Hazard is really effective whatsoever as a, uh, as a wing back because he can't provide much at all on defense. But whenever he kind of gets into that, you know, middle third, final third, and Augsburg's uh, half. That's when he starts to look really dangerous, and our team as a whole starts to look really dangerous as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I think putting him in that position, you're almost not even, you're not asking for it to defend. It's just like let's please just like create and get something moving forward. And that that solo run, that goal, uh, yeah, was fantastic. Him cutting through everyone um, was great. But beside, like until that moment, there, like first. I mean, you said that it was slow. It was a slow first half. Um, yeah, it looked quiet and a little bit cagey from us. I think we were like just again really rattled from Europe, and we didn't really have the most confidence, especially with that personnel on the field. Yeah, um, yeah, and luckily, luckily for us, <laughs> Augsburg wasn't great either in the first half. There were not a lot of chances created on either end. I, th- I thought that I thought they were honestly pretty decent. I thought they defended really well against us. I mean, they couldn't. They didn't really let uh, let us get anything going. Um, no, they so like the most effective in attack. But yeah, to that point, I, I they that was my point more is like mm-hmm. they didn't have a lot of opportunities to score. Mm-hmm. Um, but they they did a I felt like they did a good job of like shutting us down specifically like going down the middle. Uh, I think we are a team who can yeah. work through the middle of the field, yeah. where a lot of teams will like try to play it out wide. Uh, but they did a great job of shutting down that middle like court like the quarter is going straight through the center of the field and, uh, and you saw it like they their uh, attackers all just like kind of packed into the middle and we sent our our left and right backs essentially mm-hmm. like out wide to try to play it out and but to or spread them out and we couldn't play anything through the middle which really hurt us yeah and on defense obviously whenever you have just hummels in that center role um they're, they're, it's going to be easy for them to dink balls over the top because pretty much anyone on the field including their goalkeeper might have been able to outpace hummels at that night <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that's definitely one of the, another area that we can get exposed in is leaving Hummels, um, in no man's land in the middle, but yeah, came out the second half, um, with, with some pretty good energy on and off the ball, but it just, it just fell off quick. Again, I think a lot of the guys looked really gassed. They were just still rattled from Europe and kind of just looked like they were fed up with the season in general, which gained Augsburg's confidence which invited pressure and um encouraged them to just keep throwing waves of attacks at us at the second half yeah um I know I heard I think Rosa said something about uh, in his like post game about being tired from playing away Europe and and against Rangers and the tough and I get it and that is tough like you want to see teams being able to play because if if you're a team who's competing in Europe you need need that the really unfortunate thing is, like, mm-hmm. due to our injury list, we don't have the depth to do it. Like, we're yeah. we're, a, we're a team. We were playing uh, multiple games a week with Europe, but like, we just don't have the depth with how. So it makes sense that we're tired, and especially the Augsburg is a lot more fresh. And then, how many guys did we go out? Like, how many guys were we missing from the last games? Just from the like a few, and like we just didn't we didn't have Holland. We didn't. Have, well, wish Holland wasn't there. We didn't yeah. have Royce. Didn't have Meunier. Those are all three pretty. You know, they're vital players. They're all starters. And then it, it sucks because when we did start to get tired, we just didn't have any subs who could come on and mm-hmm. really change the game. Same. It's like it's was almost a downgrade. I I originally thought like why why did we sub? Like why do we take Mullen out? Why do we take? I think it was Hazard who also came out, and I was like kind of mad. I was like why take him out? But yeah. I understand if they're gassed. But it's just like our we didn't have any creativity really. Get, we didn't have any game changers coming off the bench to do anything, and they did. And that was a big point in the game. Like they brought on their subs and mm-hmm. just tore us apart. Yeah, no, their subs, their subs did a lot for them. They brought on, uh, you know, they brought on pace, and they were able to just keep throwing waves of attacks at us that we couldn't really control. And our control on and off the balls just slowly fizzled away after those first fifteen or so minutes. 
Uh, we had like decent chances. I know, like you mentioned, Mullen before he was uh, on that left wing and did the thing that you like where you cut, he cuts in on his right and had that gorgeous shot. Uh, you know, God damn the power that he has um, when he shoots is, is pretty incredible. And I don't know how their keeper was able to keep that out. But after that, yeah, again, it just slowly fizzled away. And that's whenever Augsburg was be able to uh, bring on fresh legs and kind of wear, or weigh us down. Yeah, I think shortly into them bringing on their subs, I don't remember, it might have been the 70th, I guess they brought in their subs around the 70th minute mark. I don't remember exactly when, but there was a time where obviously we were slowing down. We were taking a lot of pressure and absorbing a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how much time was left. I was like, oh man, like we can do this. Like we can hang on. We just need to sit tight and we'll get through this. And then I look at the clock and like, nope, there's still 20 minutes left. Yeah. No way we're going to like pull through this. Cause I was, I was surprised when Hazard scored not because the goal, just like I had went into this game with no confidence. Mm-hmm. I was I was feeling down, so I get that the team was feeling down too. Um, and so when we went up, I was like, oh great, like such a great opportunity to like really kick it in the second half and mm-hmm. and pull a win out of this. Um, and then we just I don't remember where I was going with that, but we <laughs> we, we couldn't hang on. No, it, it was I think in the second half I, I got a lot more confidence and which is why I was feeling like, oh, yeah, we're hanging on, and we might not score again, but we can get through this. And with just all our injuries, that's why it's so, like, down. And then... Uh, yeah, and the, mo- and the more chances that they created, the more that um, that raised the chances of us making mistakes at the back, and that's exactly yeah. what happened. I know, I think Pongracic had a pretty decent game, but obviously his error was the one that just completely led to one of their goals. But we were just defending, like, it was, like, the 88th minute, and we were only up by one at that point, and... We still had plenty of uh, time on the clock to go. Yeah. And again, just just didn't look way that up for it. Yeah. As soon as they scored, I wanted to, I had a little, I mean, I didn't, I was, I was like, maybe we can pull something out, but the, how we had been playing the last 20 minutes, mm-hmm. n- like not a chance. And, and once, and once they netted the uh, equalizer, yeah. there was no way they were giving up a point. I know they were sitting back and, um, you know, fair play to them. That's, I think this is like the first time that they've been out of their relegation zone and since like match day 20. So, I mean, that was a vital point of theirs and they were never going to let that go. And you got, you have to know that against these kind of teams that are in those relegation battles, they are, they are there to play. They are there to compete. And if you go out that mentality of, you know, who cares if you lost last game, you have to go out with the uh, mentality that you are going to win or at least give it your all. And when you don't, you're going to get caught up. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty rough, pretty rough. Again, I'm sorry that I asked for just draws because they sucked. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's weird how like on point we were with everything. Not only the draws, but we we, we nailed down two two against Rangers. Um, a handful of the lineups. Yeah, we're smart. That's why you should hang out and listen to this yeah. podcast. We know what we're talking about. Um, so we are gonna have Adam join us shortly. I do want to get into some Twitter questions and go through our injuries and kind of how that's played into the season. Cause I know I think pretty early on in our podcast days and I was trying to hammer on, uh, on Carver about Carver's the, the expert. I'm just here and I like, Whoa, I, hold on. I want to, I want to go ahead and clarify that I am not an expert. I'm just a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Carver's been a fan longer than me. So I like to ask Carver the hard questions and be like, what's wrong with the team? How do we fix it? You did say earlier, like, well, if I was manager, I would do this. So I don't know. That's talking with some balls, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I know like early on in the podcast, we talked about injuries and how many injuries we had. And, and we also, but at the same time, we're like, well, we can't just, we need to have more. We, the team needs to do more. Rosa needs to get more out of the team. We need to be able to push beyond yeah, the injuries. There's a standard. You can't just blame everything on your injuries. Yeah. But, but with just the consistency of the injuries mm. and who's been out and how long they've been out since the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. Um, And now like towards the end of the season, like I want to have hope for these last 10 games that we have that we can push on and like get close or hang on to our, our second spot in the Bundesliga. But with the injuries we're still looking at, like I'm not confident at all. Well, I do got to say we have quite the, I'm not going to say easy run, but ideal run of fixtures for the rest of the season. Um, We have, Mainz next, then Bielefeld, Köln, Leipzig, which is obviously going to be a uh, a big one. Um, but you still have, towards the end of the scene, we have Bochum, we have uh, Kreuter Firth again, Hertha Berlin, Stuttgart. So, I mean, these are teams that are at least, you know, anywhere from 14th to last. So, 
compared to, I think Bayern has a lot more tougher competitions. I know they have Leverkusen, then they have Hoffenheim, then Union Berlin, then Freiburg, then Augsburg, and then after a week, it's us. So, I mean, they have a lot more difficult uh, fixtures lined up for the rest of the season. So, I, again, I'm not saying the title race is on or anything like they're back on or we're going to come back and at least make it a challenge, but we, I, I feel like there's going to be no questions that we can at least lock in second place. Yeah. So, okay, looking at our injuries now, current injuries, uh, Munier, who... He posted that photo. Did you see the photo he posted did, did, on his did, crutches? Yeah. He's like smiling. I was like, dude, don't be smiling. Be sad because that's how sad I am. Like I'm, I'm heartbroken, and you're over here like, hey, 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 guys, I'll be hey, back. I'm Thomas I'll be Munier. back hey, middle I'm of May. <laughs> so I know, I know that's crazy. Yeah, Munier's out middle of May. Um, Geo is maybe two or three weeks yep. <clears throat> minimum, but we saw how that went last time. A Kanji calf injury. Um, Oh yeah, he he is doing individual training, and I saw. I, sorry, I'm looking at. I got multiple things going on because Adam's joining us in a second, and I'm trying to read five things at once. You're good, but I saw. I did see a Kanji like running around today, which is good. Royce uh, out with his hip injury until early late March or April. Holland, who knows? I've seen so many different things yeah. with Holland, um, because they said maybe he'll be ready for Rangers. Clearly, yeah, that wasn't knows? the case. Um, maybe we'll have him this weekend. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but so I want to go back to the beginning. Back to the beginning of the season, because for anyone who, and I think just how this whole season has played off, and this is a car, question for Carver. Mm-hmm. It's not a rapid fire question. So, yeah. so, but go back to the, okay, there, there's a tweet by, uh, there's a, you, everyone probably knows uh, Derek on Twitter if you're on the BVB Twitter world, because Derek puts a lot of great stuff out there. It's really cool. I'd love to get him on the podcast sometime. But he put out this tweet, says, does Rosa have the players he needs to be successful? He also answered, himself and said no but I'm just going with those questions uh, is the roster going to be redone enough to give Rosa the players he needs to be successful but just on the note of players he needs to be successful and looking back with this team and last summer's signings does he did Rosa I I feel like Rosa inherited this team mm-hmm. it's, which is the same team as last year because who in the summer did we bring in to Im- improve the starting 11 yeah yeah, I, I hear what you're saying because I mean, obviously everyone's going to say Malin, but improve. I, I think he he came in to be like a backup striker or a yeah. secondary striker, um, and so we we didn't do anything in the summer to really improve the eleven. It's yeah. just the same team that played last year. That what we got second again, and so you, so okay. So the question is, it, does he have the players to be successful? So well, my question is, I guess it's not a question. I'm not asking a question yet. I'm just putting it out there to anyone who thinks Rose is not a mm-hmm. good enough manager. Because I had a couple weeks ago, we've been back and forth. I've been like, get him out of here. We need someone new. Because I've also said, oh, maybe he needs to get more out of these players. But then I, I think about what he's dealt with. Like, he has this one team. And yeah, we have like, maybe he came in and like, this is a pretty solid team. But we didn't really sign anyone for him. And then the team he thinks is all injured. Like how many, I would say how many of our starting who you would think as starters have actually been playing consistently? I, well, not a lot. Not a lot. I, I'll give you that and I'll give Rosa that. But, I, I, you know, this is just me talking here. But if the question is, you know, does he have the personnel to be successful? Like, you know, the question is, well, what is successful for Borussia Dortmund this season? And I would argue at the minimum, uh, second place, Make a make one of the cup runs in one of the competitions that you're making a cup run like a real one, and um, I don't he hasn't delivered on one of those. And you know if if we continue in the ra- the direction that we're going, we might not end up in second. I you know I know we have easier fixtures, but if he cannot get these players on board with the game plans that he has, I think his job could be in jeopardy going into the summer. I, I don't know. It's a tough one. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't want to rant <laughs> or ramble. I, I mean, and th- this is stuff we'll probably get into more like at the end of the season, too. I just think this is going out of the Europa League and just what we have left. And we still have all these injuries. It's just like a good time to get into it a little bit. Yeah. Post season, we'll get into a lot more. Probably, I just think I he came into this team thinking one thing, and then it's really hard it's really hard to build something when you have so much inconsistency because you, you can't build form and partnerships when people are totally. rotating in and out all the time and you don't know who you're going to have. And 
Um, no, I absolutely agree with that. And there are some games that, you know, things are just going to happen and you just kind of have to play and uh, do your part as much as you can. But there are also games that I feel like we could have, I mean, this happens also, it's not just under Rosa, it's under, under every single manager, basically since Klopp almost, um, that we just give up needless points against opposition that we should be beating. Yep. I would argue Augsburg might be one of them. Um, St. Pauli, I mean, they played phenomenal that game, don't get me wrong, but that's a fixture that Rosa, I think, should have, uh, or that's a cup that I think Rosa could have easily gotten further into. Um, so, yeah, we'll see these next six or so months. It's, it's going to be a big tale for Rosa's employment. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll get into some Twitter questions. That wasn't, that was just, that was my big question, uh, but we do have a few Twitter questions. Um, this one from Zaheen, um, who listens out of Malaysia. Uh, okay, I, so I'm not, he's asking about tactical analysis, which I d- can't help you there, but uh, let me just read this. I uh, would love to learn more about tactical analysis and game plan since I'm not an expert. Neither are we, Carver. <laughs> just about to say. Um, but I noticed our game plan is much slower. Is it because Rosa can't risk losing any other players to injury? Which that, I'm like, that kind of makes sense because like you, if you want to play the high pressing really quick, I mean, that's, <sighs> you see it with, I mean, it's a, it was a big story like Leeds United in the Premier League. It's like they're mm-hmm. playing this high, high energy game and people get injured all the time. So I, I don't think he is like... Our, our gameplay is suffering because of that. You know, it's not like he's like pulling back our tempo. I th- I still think he's very demanding in the pace that we bring to games. Um, but it's just a matter of our, our game plan changes a lot. It's yeah. it. We've run close to a dozen different formations this season, um, a, a bunch of different systems and how we play in those formations. And I think Rosa demands a bunch of different things from different players, depending on that night. And also if you look at the bigger picture and zoom out a little bit, you know, our style of play has changed dramatically in the last two years. And we were under three different managers for at least several different months at a time for two years straight. Went from a defensive and patient side under Favre to, I know we did a lot of the really high pressing under Terzic. And um, now this new kind of style of football under Rosa, which is, you know, supposed to be quote unquote, I remember him saying it's supposed to be exciting, free flowing, attacking football, um, which we see it in, in small bursts, but you know, not much else. I know he probably never really mentions anything about defense because that seems like something that he doesn't really want to tackle, at least right now. Um, and obviously, yeah, we've had so such bad luck with injuries. So, so kind of on the tac- another question, kind of on the tactic tactics note um, from Steve Palmer uh, at Steve O'Palms. Uh, he said, "I was at last weekend's game and the game in Glasgow and watched the game uh, yesterday on TV. Uh, the main issue is the weak defense and lack of real created." creativity out wide there must be an issue between coach and players uh, if coach is good and coaching why don't the players follow his tactics you think that's because no I, I i know favre or not why do i keep saying favre i was reading favre, favre. really wants favre yeah, back. yeah to be fair i guess at that time i was reading favre on my laptop but um i know rosa doesn't fancy wingers much at all and i think that really you know shows why we're not usually us- utilizing our width and um I hope we change that because I think that is a, been a gaping hole in our system. I know Sancho was close to irreplaceable in that position, but we should be going after a proper winger this summer. I mentioned already someone like Ryan Kent that can provide you that pace, those quick uh, turns, and you know, able to set up attacks on a dime. You know, and and clearly uh, get out of those really tight spaces. I, you know, we have Hazard, but he's really up and down in form, especially yep. this season more down than up as well as we're playing them out of position at uh, wing back. So we would need some like actual wide players to, I think really give this team some more success. Yeah. We had another question on, man, you're doing really good at like answering these and leading into the next Twitter, Twitter question. So <laughs> shout out Carver uh, from Ben Howells who said, who would you like to see signed this summer? We've talked about this uh, a lot. And I also talk about how I hate transfer talking about transfers so far out. So I'm no, I don't have any specific, there's no players I'm already thinking about. Cause when I see the, Everyone on Dortmund Twitter being like freaking out, like, oh, we might sign this player. We saw what happened with Zacharias, so I'm not getting hopes about freaking anything. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, we've talked a lot about Nico Schlotterbeck um, mm-hmm. and Adi Yemi. I, I almost see like maybe we won't get Adi Yemi because what the prices seem to be way off. But so maybe not specifics, but do you, you said a winger. Who else? Yeah, it's it's a great question because I was thinking about this earlier as well, and I'm like, well, yeah, obviously, 
need probably another center back or at the very least another DM to to put in that position because I don't think we really have one right now. I know we have Chan, but he plays in that uh, back three more often than not. Vitzel's done, and Dahoud and Bellingham aren't really much of defensive midfielders. So a center back or def- and or a defensive mid, again, also depending on what happens to Akenji and Zagadou. Those two holes need to be filled. I already mentioned a winger. All these things are incredibly vital for this team to be successful. And of course, if Holland leaves, a replacement for him. So I guess <laughs> short version, defensive mid slash center back, one that could do both. I know Zachariah was someone that could do both, but I guarantee there's plenty of other people out there that we can look at. A winger and uh, an exciting striker to uh, hopefully take the place for Holland if he does decide to leave. And if he leaves, then hopefully we have a ton of money to buy what we need. Well, <laughs> and it's only a $75 million release clause. And I know we're not hurting financially, but we don't have, you know, much of the financial power that we used to have pre pandemic. So, but, and, but also I know that I know the board needs, like they know they need to address some of these issues this year if, in order for us to not keep slipping down yeah. in, um, with our standards. And I think Sule was a, was a great statement signing showing that we do mean business this summer. Yeah. And this is me being real optimistic, but I have faith of uh, Sebastian Kale and coming into this role, yeah. especially already being in the, within Dortmund. And I have a lot of faith in him already Club working legend. on stuff, yeah. seeing what's been going wrong the last couple of years yep. and just coming into the, I think this is a great transitional time for him and it gives him time for and him he, and Rosa to work now, mm-hmm. figure out what they want, what they need, and then really go after it, which we saw with Sule. Um, and I, I just, I don't know, I'm hopeful with, you know, I, with a refreshing perspective this summer. I agree. He's going to be working under Zork, one of the best sporting directors in world football. And he's going to come in with a lot of fresh ideas. Like you mentioned already, he's got the history with Borussia Dortmund. He's a club legend as a player and hopefully now a legend as a, a sporting director. I, I think he's going to do well. Yeah. So uh, just a couple more questions. Um, oh, where is that one? Okay, so this is from Andre Swan. We kind of already answered this. He said, with all the injuries and frequency of them, do we give Mokoko game time? Princes, uh, risking him with his injury uh, list this season, or do you continue to ease him in risking he leaves? Yeah, I already, yeah. I already mentioned already. I, th- I think if you give him, I mean, you can't be giving him five, ten minutes a game, but starting him when you can and giving him uh, 20, 25 minutes or so whenever available, I think that can help him a lot. So, okay, we're going to, I'm going to combine these, these last two will kind of be combined. And we talked about this one a little bit. So Ryan, uh, our guy 12 said with all the injuries, do you think BVB will finish in second? And I'm going to combine that with, okay, well you answered that rapid fire. (laughs) Uh, Andre Shoemaker said, where do we go from here? Uh, Seems like the players and the fan base have all been kicked in the private parts. But I think that's just kind of like riding out. My, My answer to that is, we just have to like Rose has got to get them playing as a team these last 10 games. And again, what, like you mentioned, we, since we have just now the Bundesliga to focus on, I think there should be enough time for us to build consistency in training and lock down that second, uh, second position. No problem because man, if he can't, if he can't secure second in this economy, <laughs> I, there's no way he survives the summer. That is all four competitions you've completely failed in. Second, Injury, even, injuries or not. even if he stays top four? I think if he falls on the third. Yeah, there, there, it's yeah. not like, uh, I think it's, it's Leverkusen is in third. Yeah, they're like six, seven points behind us. Let me let me double check that. There are six points behind us. Yeah. We should, man, that should be able to maintain. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hope. God. Uh, he did have one more question real quick. Doritos, taco flavored or Cool Ranch? I guess nacho. It's not nacho cheese. Isn't it? Doritos and nacho cheese. Um, cool Ranch. I, I say cool, he said Team Cool Ranch. I'm Team Cool Ranch. I'll probably be except cool ranch. I think if you're getting the Doritos Locos Taco at Taco Bell, mm. I would go nacho cheese nice. for the taco. Nice. Anyways, that's it. Okay. Um. So hang on, hang on tight to something. I don't know where I'm going with this. We're gonna have Adam on in a second, so we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, we're back, and we're joined by, you probably know him, especially if you're on the uh, the Dortmund Twitter, if you're in that that realm, uh, which I like to dabble in, and I get really frustrated seeing people's negative comments all the time. But Adam is a source of light 
and uh, and hope, and he brings us a lot of joy. I like seeing all the stuff that Adam puts out, uh, a lot of happy stuff. And we, we've referenced his Twitter, his website a lot. You probably know who he is more than you know who we are. Um, Adam Daraski is joining us. He's got his website. Um, but we are going to talk about, we, we want to get into um, the women because uh, you're great. You're like the best source if you want to talk about Dortmund women, uh, which we are going to get into. But first of all, Adam, how are you doing, man? Thanks for joining us. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. This is great. Been enjoying the podcast and happy to join. We got to ask before we talk about the positivity that is the Dortmund women's team, how, how are you feeling after going out of Europa League and our, our last Bundesliga stuff? Uh, I mean, it's you just kind of throw your hands up right now. Like, I, I don't <laughs> even know what even to be upset about because I feel like the last match should have been a win. They should have played. They, they played well enough to get a win. They just didn't. I I'm just so frustrated. But at the same time, you know, we're in second place and we're comfortably in second place. And I look at this and I'm like, are we like the best, most miserable second place team ever? <laughs> like, what's going on here? I mean, yes, we're out of the the Pokal, we're out of Champions League, out of Europa League, which is just a huge disappointment. Uh, because I think that, you know, everybody thought that there was a chance to actually go far and maybe challenge for that title. But, oh, man, things are just not going well right now. We thought that, you know, when everybody came back from the injuries, everything would be better. But that actually hasn't happened yet. It, it, maybe it happened for like one game or something, but everyone's hurt again. It's worse than ever, actually. It's crazy that the injury list has bled into 2022. We're almost three months in now and the injury list is still pages long. Right. And it's like Holland, Royce, Akanji, like Akanji is probably like one of the two or three most important players on this team. And, and just now with him gone, we see things just completely unraveling. And I think that that should be eye opening to anyone who still doubts the ability of Manuel Akanji. Agreed. Well yeah. Said. Yeah. And I think just like the inconsistency, we, we were just talking about injuries and everything and how it's been this whole season. And it's just like, it's so hard to get, in a flow and a rhythm when people are in and out all the time and for long periods. Um, but like you said, we're still in second and you wouldn't think that by, I don't know, by the reactions after the game. And when you look at it, it's like, we're still holding on to second by yeah, like six points or something. So right. if we can just like power through and keep it going, then great. But yeah, it, it does feel a little disappointing, but. Okay. Um, it's every other competition that's <laughs> yeah, second place is nice, but to be out of everything else is, is just leaves it kind of empty. Uh, so, you know, we know we're not going to win any, any titles this year. And if, if titles are the only reason you follow football, like 95% of fans are going to be disappointed. So you got to find other things that you're interested in. And, and I think that, you know, Dortmund does have some to offer. <laughs> yeah, especially since I know Jake is also a Tottenham, uh, I don't, I don't want to speak for you, but I know you also do follow Tottenham and they're a little um, dry with trophies here and there. So, Oh, very dry. But it's also, it's the same. It's just up and down and up and down. Like I could probably mm -hmm. copy and paste all my Dortmund podcast talk and maybe start a Tottenham podcast. Yeah. <laughs> just like copy and paste the disappointment, the up and down, but we don't need to talk about Tottenham. So I do want to get into, uh, we're obviously going to talk about the women, but uh, Adam, I think you have an interesting background and, in, and, in, like your what you do with work and maybe that bled into the website. I'm interested how you got started in your website and if that came from because what you work for like you do like football statistics. I, I work for Sports Reference, which we have several uh, sites. Uh, baseball Reference is one that's been around for 21 years now. That was oh, wow. uh, always my 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 favorite, and uh, you know I, I worked for uh, sports reference several years on a contract basis, but I joined full-time in 2020 and now I get to work on, you know, FB ref as well. That's our, our newest site. It's a world football stats and we've got, uh, you know, your traditional stats. We've got your advanced data from stats bomb for the, the top competitions and, and lots of cool stuff there. So uh, it's nice. That's kind of how I learned the game. Uh, coming from a baseball background into football uh, using the stats. And that's kind of why I'm so focused on, you know, building a site for Dortmund stats is because that's kind of been my thing on the baseball side. That's really interesting. So we have a little Moneyball esque uh, <laughs> work on our hands. <laughs> that's it, great. Yeah. I mean, just trying to like, you know, what about what, how do you determine what 
good football performances from, you know, raw stats, you know, is it progressive passes? Is it pressures and stuff like that? I haven't figured any of it out yet, but it's interesting to try. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. We we'll, we're going to, we'll link your website and everything too, but uh, just if, like I said, I think more people know you than about us, but real quick, if you want to plug like your Twitter and how people can follow you and, and your website and everything. Yeah. On Twitter, it's, it's foosball twit. Uh, if you're interested in the baseball side of things, I'm also baseball twit. That's where that name came from. <laughs> uh, I've been doing the baseball thing on Twitter for a bazillion years. Uh, football is, is, is newer for me. And uh, the website is uh, Dorowski.com. So that's D-A-R-O-W-S-K-I.com slash Bevabe. And I see, uh, I mean, we're, we're at least can see you on video. The podcast won't be on video, but I did. And you're wearing a baseball shirt and you got your Dortmund jerseys in the background, which I saw that you were doing a baseball podcast the other day. And I think the preview photo was just you and your Dortmund jersey behind it. And like, so I appreciate you going on to like it's a baseball podcast just with the Dortmund stuff, everywhere, which is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that, it's it's always interesting to it's a conversation starter. You some, sometimes find people that cross over just like I do. And they're like, oh, I, you know, I follow Giorena or I was following Pulisic. And, and not, every once in a while you get someone that's like, yeah, I lived in Germany for two years and that was my team. You know, it's, it's it's kind of funny. That's that's crazy that you came from uh, working with baseball, Adam. That's really cool. And. Uh, I know I mentioned this already off the air, but I'm a huge fan of your work. I'm a huge fan of the site. You're doing the Lord's work, man. I, I know uh, women's soccer isn't advertised or televised or appreciated as much as it should be, let alone in a small town in Germany. And the fact that, you know, you created a resource for people to go and have, you know, full length on statistics, pages of analysis for each game, and also full... Uh, streaming recaps for people to go back and watch the full game is, is really incredible. Yeah. And the, the streaming uh, links that I have up there, that's not, it's, it's not me. I want to say that's uh, yeah. stage TV and uh, they, they are a wonderful company. I think they're local in Dortmund too, where they oh, have wow. a bunch of cameras around and uh, they record matches. Like it's, I'm blown away that we can watch seventh tier women's football yeah. over here in the U S but the vast majority of games we've been able to watch. And, you know, I, I love sharing clips and stats and everything from the games as they go along because there isn't that English language resource out there for it. And I started doing it and people responded to it and I'm very happy to, to keep doing it. And, and it's led to, you know, you know, communicating with the players and stuff like that. I'll get messages from players that are like, Oh, you got that clip of that goal. Like, can you send that to me? Like, how did you get that? And, and, and it's nice to, to be able to give that to them and, you know, communicate with them, you know, this, this players who are, play multiple positions on the team and I'll just reach out and be like, you know, curious, which one is your favorite? What's the one that you, you know, played growing up. And it's, it's nice just to be able to, to feel like you're, you're part of something that's new and it's growing and it's going to be big. We know that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. And we we found, I mean, we found you. I don't know how I didn't find you earlier just through Dortmund Twitter because, um, but we, we were talking one week in the episode where we just brought up, oh, we were like recapping 2021 and just yeah, like the highlights of the was, season. Yeah. We we're talking about how they launched a team. And I was like, man, it'd be really cool because I didn't know Carver was going to th like throw that in there. <laughs> um, and I was like, it'd be so cool to get an update on what the women's team is doing. So I like just put it out there like on the podcast, like, hey, if anyone knows and someone sent us your name and then that's when we got in contact and started talking. And then, yeah, senior site. I was like, wow, like literally everything we could want or need is here. And so we've done some recaps on the women uh, thanks to you and your sites and statistics. So, but to get into the women and uh, their season so far, if you want to jump in, I would just love for you to like tell people about the women's team, uh, how they've been doing so far, especially with the uh, and the midseason friendlies. So if you want to give a like a, a recap, get people informed before we jump into the rest of the season, which they're about to start. Yeah, certainly. So uh, it was a couple years ago now that that uh, the club announced that they were going to start a women's team. And they, they put it out to the fans. They wanted to know, do you want us to essentially purchase the license of like a, a second or, or even first tier team and go directly to the top tier? Or should we start from the very bottom? And the club members overwhelmingly wanted to start at the bottom and build it up as a Borussia Dortmund team from the bottom up rather than just, uh, I mean, not that I'm saying there's something wrong with it, but like Eintracht Frankfurt, when they uh, joined the Bundesliga, they essentially bought the license of a Frankfurt team and then 
we're suddenly okay. in the first tier. Whereas uh, we're starting from the seventh tier right now, uh, which is just a, an amateur. Uh, it's called the Kreisliga A, uh, and that's the the division that they play in. And they have played nine matches so far in the first half of the season, and they won all nine. They scored 67 goals and they conceded zero. That's when I remember Jake told me that stat, I was blown away. I was like, <laughs> eh, then I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah. And they've been playing in the local cup. This isn't the, the women's DFB Pokal. This is a local uh, cup mm. with teams that are uh, mostly their division and then one and maybe two divisions higher. It might just be one. And they've made it to, I think it's the, the, semifinals already so that'll be taking part uh when the the season starts up again as well uh so they won their three matches so far and also didn't concede any goals i think one of them they won like 18 to nothing or something like that like it's the the cup has been a a fun tournament as well yeah there's those went uh, one was 12 to nothing one was five and one was three uh the 12 oh 15 to nothing was the biggest win that was in the season um, so you mentioned the, the mid season, uh, friendlies. Yeah. So they've been interesting to watch because, uh, most of them have been, well, all of them have been against higher level divisions, uh, either one or two divisions higher. And they actually just, <laughs> the timing of this chat is, is, is impeccable because they actually just lost and for the first time since their second friendly ever, which was also against a higher division team. So they lost to um, Heron, I think that's how you pronounce it, H-E-E-R-E-N. And they lost two to one in the 93rd minute on a free kick. That was a direct free kick that was unstoppable. So it was a little bit of a bummer. They were winning one nothing in the 83rd minute. Um, But yeah, they they won two of the other ones uh, and drew the two others. So a very good showing. Uh, They had... One of the wins was five to one against a team two divisions higher. So wow. very impressive. Yeah. So they actually did concede some goals in these <laughs> friendlies, but they're playing higher divisions and, and it was a good test because I think in the league matches, it's been a little hard to identify what they need to work on because, you know, I hate to say it, but there's yeah. so much higher than their competition. <laughs> yeah. but there have been some games that have been close. Uh, they did have a couple of games where they were forced to uh, uh, play uh, shorthanded because they had uh, a couple of red cards, which was interesting to see. Um, and it's, it's funny. I did a, uh, an article on stats uh, for the women's team on the, the Dortmund international app. And uh, I was calculating things like how many goals per minute they score, like at 11 with 11 players. And then when, when they were a player short, they, they were scoring every 15 minutes when they're a player short. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess uh, they, they have nine more matches in the league when, when they start up again, which is this coming Saturday. And uh, they also have a cup game uh, that is uh, on uh, is it March, March 24th, 24th yeah. yeah, against Vambala. Looking ahead, I guess, like to the, the next following years. And I mean, I, I was really interested in the friendlies. I knew they were playing up because that's, yeah, obviously if, if this, they're just blowing everyone away. You want to see how they're how they can compete or what maybe what level they're at. And I guess what's the progress of them moving up? Is it going to be like seventh to sixth? Is it going to be the slow process or what, what does that look, look like moving forward? Yeah. I, their stated goal was to try to get to, I think they, they stated this, try to get to the top within a decade. So that leaves a little bit of wiggle room. If it takes a couple uh, promotions here and there, um, they're going to get, promoted this year they're they're i don't think there's any way that they're gonna miss that out uh miss out on that um even next year i think they probably have a pretty good chance with the squad that they have after that they might have to think about like all right how do we build up the squad in other areas and quite frankly they have a couple players that maybe they have to worry about uh other clubs looking at that might be able to come in and say oh do you want to just play second or first division now instead of waiting all these years. So I'm very curious to see how uh, the squad development goes, especially since I've gotten attached to like literally every player. So it's, it's going to be difficult for me to see like people come in and out uh, over this process. But, you know, you, you see it on the men's side too, but there isn't that connection that you have uh, obviously with the women's side. 
I'm glad you mentioned that uh, squad development part because I was wondering that too, as they climb up through the years, are, are they going to be able to uh, attract much talent if that wants to go down several divisions and vice versa of how many teams from the top division can pick out from uh, Dortmund women teams. So that's fascinating. Hmm. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see like if um, uh, Alexandra Pop is a huge fan of, of Dortmund and is a veteran player and, you know, maybe on the, the, you know, she's had some injuries, so maybe she is on the the tail end of her career now. Maybe not the tail end yet, but I'm wondering if, like, as we climb, maybe we can kind of meet her halfway, and then she like joins the team or something in the third division or something like that. So there might be some some bigger names that come in that way. I think Lena Magul is also a a fan as well. Sweet, yeah. I mean, we'll definitely link everything uh, as as we do. I usually throw it in on almost every episode. I'm like, hey, if you want to check out the women team, here, here's the site, and here's who you need to follow. Um, especially now moving forward with, with the men, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not the greatest. So if you want to watch some good Dortmund football and, and catch a win. <laughs> yeah. As of now, uh, six out of the nine league matches have stream links already. Uh, the cup match does as well. Cause that one's going to be at home. So you can see a lot of the games and yep. a lot of them are, are on Sundays. This coming one is on Saturday. There was some sort of scheduling change, but the rest of the matches have been on Sundays, except for the cup match will be on a Thursday afternoon um, or evening there, I guess. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, w- what players will climb up the scoring charts as well. Cause we have, uh, we've spread out the scoring. We, I, I don't think we have um, either of the top two scorers in the league, but we have a lot of players who have scored a lot of goals. Uh, so I'll be curious to see uh, who ends up near the top of that. Yeah, I have seen. So looking at uh, your site and just looking at the the roster, there's a lot of young talent and then there's some older too. So what? how does that look on the field? Um, is it like a good mix too, like, like on the full roster or what do you see there? Yeah, it has uh, been a really good mix. Like um, you might have heard of Hannah Guzman. She has 13 goals and, and four assists. In all comps, 12 of the goals are in the league. She's the team's leading scorer in the league um, when you count all competitions. It's Vanessa Heim, who is actually uh, one of the the veteran players who plays on the left wing. She actually also is a coach uh, for the Ivanic Football Academy and works for for Dortmund as well. Two of the players work uh, for Borussia Dortmund and other aspects as well. Uh, Annika Herbig is another one. You can actually see her... uh, uh, she works for the travel agency in the, in the club too. So she's been going to like the, the youth matches and the, the UAV youth league and stuff cool. and, and posting pictures and stuff. But yeah, uh, we've got a, a great mix of, you know, Carolyn call is a, another young striker that we have. That's, that's gotten to score a bunch of goals. I think she, it's really helpful to them to have players like Vanessa Heim on the left and, and Katrin Lau on the right, you know, feeding them these, these beautiful passes too. And, and they're really getting to play some high quality football and God, the midfield is just incredible. Uh, uh, Louisa Bergman is, is, uh, you know, our midfield destroyer and, and set piece specialist and, and uh, just a brilliant passer and, and great defender uh, in the midfield. Leah Raja Harper is she's she's so tiny and so dynamic <laughs> and uh, the the friendly not this last one but the one before she scored a brace and was just knocking people over that are like a foot taller than her just just so fun to watch and the defense has been of course absolutely impenetrable um, and you've got some players like uh, Anna Zabel and uh, Virginia Glanzer who play literally everywhere. Uh, Virginia uh, started the last game at left wing and then played the second half at center back. Like she's just so good that you can put her anywhere. Um, and that, and that's not because of injuries. Like we see on the men's side, that's just because they're versatile. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. It's, she started at left wing. I, I almost wonder if it was because she was playing against her old club and it was like, Oh, let's give her a chance to maybe, maybe score. And she did score the goal, which was awesome. Um, but then she moved back to, and it's, it's not the first match she's done that in too. Mm-hmm. She's played kind of everywhere and, and is so valuable in that way. She's one of the the players who's, who's 32 years old. Um, very experienced. We have some players that have even played second division football, um, the captain, Lisa Clemen, who, if you watch the games, man, she, she just stands out with the, the fact that she's everywhere. Uh, and she's the left back and she, she and Vanessa Heim just flying up that, that left side. It's just not even fair. I don't even know how you could 
attempt to stop them in the in the Christ Liga. That's just so good. Nice. Carver, do you have any other questions or anything on the women's team? I do not. This is all very fascinating, though. I was I was going along on the site when he was talking about each player and Players. looking at everything. So, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to learn about all of them. Yeah, I mean, no, I appreciate your passion and just your knowledge is awesome, mm-hmm. too, because it, it puts it's it gives it so much more, too, for, like, you to talk about the players. Like, when, if Carver and I have given a quick mention, it's just like, oh, yeah, they won, and um, it, it's just great to, like, you hear the names, and then you can put yeah. them to the faces thanks to your website, too, and know who to look out for, and, yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's awesome. For anyone who... Uh, specifically Dortmund fans who want to support the women's team. Um, so again, we'll, we'll link your Twitter, we'll link your website and everything so people can follow that. Uh, again, you said games coming up on Saturday and you said there is a stream for that one. There is. Yes. Cool. So you can watch some Dortmund women kick some butt in the crease Liga. Ah, and while we have you, we'd love to, we're going to, we haven't got into our, our preview of Mainz. So if you want to jump in, are you cool with that? Jumping in for Mainz with us? Yeah, I might have a little bit. I, <laughs> I, I, I uh, I just know we got to look out for Jonathan Burkhardt. He, he seems to always get one against us. So that's, <laughs> that's the big one. Yeah. Yeah. Him. And I, I know, thankfully they not, thankfully I'm, I don't want any injuries against other athletes, but I know they're also hurting for a few different players like St. Juiced as well. One of the, if not the fastest center back in the league. So, and I, and it looks like they're actually performing really well this season. I think might sit in ninth if I'm not wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's and, and we're away again. I think this is our third away game in a row. So it's it's going to be a big task to see how the the lads come out and actually perform again. Yeah, they had a really impressive outing recently against Leverkusen. I happened to have that one on. Was it the Friday match? Is that why? Yeah, that was the Friday match a couple of weeks ago, and mm-hmm. and they won late three to two. It was a very impressive performance. I mean, it's another that we should win on paper. But yeah. You got to play them on the pitch, obviously. Yeah, every game you look at where it shows the like win probability, every single Dortmund game is just like <laughs> sixty-five plus seventy percent, and it's like it's, it's never going to be that easy. <laughs> I wish it was, but now, now have you guys seen any injury updates? Are we getting anybody back? Or yeah, so we talked a little bit before we hopped on with you. I think the only player that is even just like maybe questionable to come back is Holland. Um, but again, it's up in the air with him still, but everyone else I think is definitely rolled out for another two weeks or so minimum. Yeah. yeah. And we've heard of Holland it's, for the last couple of weeks. So yeah. Holland maybe right. for the last couple of weeks. So who knows? I'm not optimistic about it. Right. So it could very much be like same, same lineup. Did, cause no one, did anyone get injured in this last game? I don't remember. Uh, I, I hope not. It's, it's <laughs> Which would be surprising yeah, if I, someone didn't get injured. I mean, uh, I saw some people complaining. I mean, I love him, but I've seen a lot of people complain about uh, Brandt being in the lineup the last match as That's well. That's what we were like, talking about I was as trying well. to think, like, what are the other options? Is yeah. the other option essentially like you move Malin to the wing and start Mukoko up top? Is that I think that's really what people want. Option? <laughs> yeah. But, which I mean, Mukoko deserves some time. It would be great to see him get uh, an extended run out rather than just 10 minutes here and there. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean that's yeah probably the same lineup is what we'll see. see that. I think that's the big question. That's what you're going to see people be frustrated again if Mukoko doesn't start and if Brant's still in there. Mm-hmm. We we've been we've always been backers of Brant. I know he hasn't been in great form lately, and he gave away that stupid penalty, but I think he can still do some great stuff. It's just everyone. I I think in the last few games too, it's hard to just point and call out one person when mm-hmm. everyone's making mistakes. No one's playing well. Like yeah, yeah, just point the finger. But Adam, do you have any score predictions? I'm going to go. Yeah. That's us every time we ask each other score <laughs> predictions. It's like, oh. like grown. <laughs> um, I think it, I mean, they're not going to blow minds out, even if they do win. Even asking for a win, I feel like away is a little much to ask for. I'm going to go optimistic for a two to one win here. Yeah. Carver, what do you feel? That's funny. I was, I was going to say it's going to be 1 1, and then I think we nick a late goal 2 1. And I, it's like, you know, a, a deserved win, but at the same time, like a, not a game we really come out and perform that well. Yeah, it's going to be the goal we concede is probably going to be like a Musa Niakate on a corner or something like that. Yeah, I would say set piece or just Hummel straight up giving the ball away, one of those two. <sighs> I, I feel bad picking on Hummels, but man, that, that dude's been trying. Uh, he, <laughs> I, I think he actually 
it, it's it, it's obvious he has absolutely no speed left. So every intervention he made in this game against Augsburg was just on on brains and planning. Yep. And yep. he made a lot of them. I, I was impressed, I have to say. Yeah, agreed. Jake, yeah. what about you for score predictions? Um, uh, yeah, I'll go. I'll, I'll change it up. I'll go with my, my normal is 3-1 because I always feel us giving up a goal. And then it's like if we're firing. Well, that's usually that's usually like my if Holland's playing, we're at least going to get three because we'll get a couple in there. But I'll still go 3-1. I'll, I'll say we, we turn it around and people get excited again for the last few or the last nine games. And we, we go 3-1 with a good performance. But we'll see. I would love just a simple 1-0. <laughs> yeah, like, that'd just be nice. Just keep the clean sheet. Get get one like crappy goal that bounces in off three people that I don't even care. Just get three points, keep a clean sheet. That's all I want. Yeah. Clean sheet would be nice. I, I guess lately, like it's either we, we win in great fashion or we lose um, in terrible fashion. And it's like, we haven't had that many draws. And I think on last week's episode, I even said like, I can't do this up and down anymore. I would rather see some draws and be like, and then what do I get? The worst draws ever, like the draws that felt like defeats. <laughs> so like I take it back. Right. I don't want to see that, but like just yeah, some more consistency. Or it's like if we keep a clean sheet, yeah, it'd be be nice. Nice to see some just different defensive structure, I guess. But yeah, yeah. So we got mines uh, this Sunday, man. Adam, thank you again so much for joining us. Thank and, you, uh, Adam. Yeah, we'll link everything in the description. So if you want to find Adam and and details on the women's team or just Dortmund men specifically, because your site covers all that yeah. too. Yeah. And uh, yep. thanks so much for hanging out listening. You can follow us Twitter and Instagram at the BVB pod. We're on YouTube. If you search the BVB podcast and all your podcast places, Apple, Spotify, all those places. So yeah, thanks for hanging out everyone. Thanks for having me. This is great. Bye.